So like when you keep something, it might have like disappeared. Yeah. yeah, there might be some keys on it that have zero. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Yes, please, please uh, check this out for me. Sure, thanks. That's what the raw images look like on Google Drive. Yeah. yeah, so it's a problem with the master. That's in an RTS, if you give all the Marines plus three damage when the player levels up, there's no way to tell how that's going to affect any given match. Some games, that could mean you're getting a bonus of 3,000 DPS. In other games, you can get nothing because your opponent played a strategy where Marines just weren't very easy. Now, if you add to this, the fact that you don't even know if both players are going to be playing with the same bonuses, it makes the already remarkably hard task of balancing an RTS darn near impossible. And throwing a StarCraft RTS into a World of Warcraft style open world runs you into a host of other balance problems that keep your game from being defeated. The first and most obvious is that if you let players build units over time, in general, players yeah, who like play for longer will always be stronger than those who play for less time. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the, back, the, the background color um, got, got different from the lighting, the green screen, the background, the plot. It's like this is not green anymore. The logistics of having players move faces all around these great Yeah. You could try and avoid the problem by not letting players move their faces, but then you run into another dead end because now you need an amazingly fast and unwieldy new variant as more and more players fill it with permanent faces. Faces which you can't even delete if you want to have any chance of throwing back in like the players. This one you can try going the O game route from only allowing tier to only letting Order players, players who are closely matched in power fight each other. But then not only are you splitting your community, but you're also creating impossible pathing problems as high level armies have to wind their way all around the low level players they can't attack to get it. I mean, imagine the scenario where you built your amazingly powerful 
powerful army, only you find yourself surrounded by low-level players oh, you can't engage and you're facing not the Then of course you run into the question of what to do with a player's stuff when they disconnect. Like the idea I think here is to so, keep it. So, does it when they log back in? What happens if I happen to be marching my army across what I thought was open space, and all of a sudden the player occupying that area mm -hmm. logs back in? What happens if someone pulls the plug when they're being attacked? I could go on for hours rattling off all these problems, and hours more trying to explain why the surface solutions to some of those problems only add new complications, or just tend to fall apart. But enough problems. We can take that discussion to the forums later. Let's talk about solutions. I'm fairly convinced that the first successful MMORTS isn't going to involve resource collection. Rather, it will allow the player to bring a finite amount of resources to a game match. Those of you who play tabletop games like Warhammer or War Machine will be familiar with this as well. In this type of design, every character or unit is assigned a point cost, and players get to bring a pre-specified number of points worth of units into battle. Once in battle, no new units can be created. This is the kind of system the old myth games use, and it's a fantastic system for ensuring balance. Even if you allow player progression, you can simply increase the cost of improved units or characters to keep them balanced. This means the higher level players may have a bit more versatility, but not more raw power. Since the designer can know exactly how many points the player has to work with, yeah, yeah, like very, like fast. In my opinion, the first successful yes. MMO RTS will have instant spatters that somehow have a larger economy than strategic battles. This means that when you play a game, Jay. you'll be participating in a one-off RTS you know? with a limited well, number of players. Great. <laughs> yeah, the raw footage has two different 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 lightings, which leads to two different green screen backgrounds, make, making it a, making that editing, make, making the editing of this problematic. What's the issue? Okay, because I'm me and uh, what's his name again? Scott. Me and Scott were trying to work this out, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you have two I'll just uh, take out the yellow. Oh, you actually know what you need to do? You need to photo correct those photos. Oh, really? Yeah, because cause I'm the. the it was originally like this one. Well, how many is there? Is there like 20 or is there like 3? There's several. But yeah, you can bring it in. There's the actually like approximately one. You can just adjust the levels and then like. You could try that. Would it add, okay, so would it, would, when I save the um, image, Im, 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 images after I edit the lighting, would, would, um, would the changes be automatically applied? Yes. Great. If I go to the same folder. That's yes, if I go to the same folder. Okay. Just change the specific frames that are, that have that flash. Yes. Oh, Sounds good. And they're really blurry as hell, buddy. What do you expect? Better job from you? Nope. You expect too much. Ah, oh, filter sharpen won't do enough. Filter sharpen more. It'll just get really weird. What happened? Sharpen it times two. Sharpen times eight. Is it even doing anything? It just sharpens it. If it's blurry, then it's just going to sharpen some key blur. I want to make some sharper blur. Also, remember these images are like 4K by 4K. Oh, wow. They're really big. Go to like image size. I might be wrong. Yeah. How is the event? Nice. How is the event? The event? Oh, it's. Well, to me, it was really exhausting. I don't uh, it was neat. Neat. Like, what was it? Oh, okay, 177.4 four has the bad, bad lighting. Five minutes. Five Oh, yes, uh, oh yes, uh, I actually, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a master of Photoshop myself, too. Thanks. Uh, if you're a debater, how to do it, I'm a debater, do it. 
Yo, Devontae, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to fix the errors on some of the images, all right? So I don't really know how. Okay, so basically, photo viewer is open. We found a picture that we found one of the pictures that has the bad lighting. So how do you fix that? How do you fix that? You open that image file name on Photoshop, desktop, monster scene folder. Back to Scarborough. Aww. Is there only blue? All right. All right. So now we've opened up the, a bad image on Photoshop. So look, Devontae. And I'm gonna let you do this on your own once you're, once you're done learning it. Okay? Ah, uh, not good at doing Photoshop. Devontae, this is this is good for whenever you need to fix errors. Yeah, because that's why. Me about the Photoshop. On Devontae, can you please have this and try it at least? So I'm not gonna do that well. Devontae, Devontae. Devontae, it's not about doing it. Devontae, it it's not about like whether you do it well or not. It's just you have to learn how to do this. But it's actually hard. Who is Alright, well, here, Devontae. Basically, you, what you want to do here is you want to adjust the hue and, like, the lightness so, like, so, so, so it will, like, match. So, it would, like, try to match, like, one of the good images that looks like this, Devontae. We want the background to look something like this. So, we control that by using the hue, saturation, and lightness. Can you try that? Wait, you want me to try this? Yeah. I'm gonna um now I'm I'm going to open up the other images that you have to edit so that the lighting looks good, okay? Okay, one seven seven six looks pretty good. Too. So we've got 11 images to uh, to adjust. So we've got 11 images to adjust, Devonte. So we really, we, yeah, we really need to get working on the image adjustments. So what you do is you use the hue and saturation tool and adjust those so that so that the background looks more like this. So we're gonna use this picture, for, this background picture for reference while we have Photoshop open. Okay. So I'm gonna adjust with those. Oh right. Um, yeah, so Devonte. Yeah. You're sitting on this computer. Okay. 